How's it going, everybody? Chris Cards back through the mail. Monday, seven returns for you today. I got all of these returns back in November of 2020. That's right. All of these are from the vault. That's right. My box of unopened returns from several years ago that I just never got to. So let's get to them today. Find out who we've got. If any other information has changed, I will let you know if any of these guys have stopped signing. I will let you know if any of these guys are no longer alive. I will let you know. Let's just get right to it, guys. Let's break out the vault. First return from Traversity, Michigan. And we've got Dennis Rasmussen on a 1989 Donruss. He says, hey, Chris, all is good here. Good luck. That's right, Mr. Dennis Rasmussen. First round draft pick of the Angels back in 1980. 17th pick overall. 89 upper deck signed for the set. By the way, my last set update was 1989 upper deck where I put 10 cards in. Did not sign the 92 uh, upper deck for whatever reason. Did sign the 88 tops with that absolutely glorious lip marking he's got going on there. Labor Day 1973, while riding his bike, he was hit by a car, almost lost his left ankle, was holding on just by the Achilles tendon. They were able to save it somehow. Went on, become a big strapping left-handed starting pitcher in the big leagues for many years. Even without any tendons in his left ankle. What an inspirational story. Dennis Rasmussen, nice return. Let's move on, guys, to return number two. Columbus, Ohio for return numero dos as I'm ripping into this envelope. And that was not a good rip. Looks like I got the index card as well, but... Um, no worse for the wear, at least I didn't tear any cards. And we've got uh, Brad Kaminsk on a not signed 1990 Leaf card. 85 Tops card, though, is signed. I'll throw the Leaf over there. I'm not sure why I didn't sign the Leaf card. Back-to-back uh, -back envelopes without a uh, one of the cards being signed. Maybe he only signs three cards. I'm not sure. There you guys go. Bad, uh, Brad Kaminsk, another first-round draft pick way back in 1979 of the Braves. Of course, he was a can't-miss prospect for Atlanta, who missed... Could not play at the major league level, unfortunately. They tried to do everything. He said they tinkered with his mechanics too much and screwed him up. Went on after his playing career to become a coach for many, many years. Did get together eight years in the big sort of kind of spent four of those years with the uh, Braves and spent the remainder of his career with five different teams in those four years. There you guys go. There's information. 1990 Leaf, probably one of the better designs out of 1990. If you think back to tops, Don Russ and score, and even Fleer, what they had going on. You got to figure Leaf was actually one of the cleanest, nicest sets coming out of 1990. And of course, he didn't sign that card. Bummer. Maybe I sent it back to him in 2024. I have no idea. I'll put on the screen if I got it back or not. Uh, there you guys go. Return number two. Let's move on, guys. Return number three. San Bernardino, California for our next return here. Home of Gene Hackman and Glenn Braggs. We've got an unsigned index card, which is in there for protection of the cards. Not really uh, wanting anybody to sign it, but sometimes they sign it. Don Sutton. Holy geez. We got Don Sutton on 84 tops card. Strikeout career active leader card along with Jerry Kuzman and Burt Blylevin. We've got Don Sutton on a 74 tops and an 87 tops Tiffany. 84 tops Tiffany signed beautifully. Holy jeez, I'm glad I opened up this envelope. I need to send this card off to Jerry Kuzman and Burt Blylevin. I think Kuzman is $5. I think Blylevin is $10 or $20 to get that card completed for my 84 top set. Very nice to get this back. Hall of Famer, 1998. 23 years in the big leagues. Passed away in January of 2021, which means I got this back just a few months before he passed. I got six total cards signed by Don Sutton, including this. So four here and two. Somewhere else along the lines, probably in another Through the Mail Monday. I can post that on the uh, image and uh, let you know which Through the Mail Monday that is in. $20 and four cards. What a bargain. Uh, passed away at 75 years old. Uh, too young and far as far as I'm concerned. I could have sent him uh, quite a few more cards. I uh, got most of his card signs for my set. Very happy I got that 84 Tops career active uh, strikeout card sent to him. Because you see, I had a different one. I had a different one uh, set to send him. And then I went through my 84 binder and found that one and put that one in there and said, thank God I did because that's going to look awesome when I complete it. And yes, I'm going to send that to Jerry Kuzman immediately. So uh, that just goes to show you I need to get, especially since I'm going after these sets, I need to open up all of these envelopes. And I know you guys, uh, some of you guys have suggested just opening them all in one video. That video would be like two hours long and it would be a nightmare to make. So I don't want to do that, but... Uh, 
I do have to get these envelopes open because I have cards like this in there that I need to get out signed. Jerry Kuzman, thank God, is still with us so I can get that signed. But uh, my goodness. In fact, I think Kuzman's 10 bucks. So anyway, don't send off to Don Sutton. Let's move on, guys, to our next return. Memphis, Tennessee. Our next return here, Memphis, Tennessee, as the old pickup line goes. We've got a couple of cards in here nestled in between a couple of index cards. We've got Kirk Presley. Kirk Presley, third cousin of Elvis Presley. Go figure. Stamped from Memphis, Tennessee. Doesn't get more authentic than that, of course. Drafted in the first round. Eighth overall pick out of Tupelo, Mississippi of the Mets. Got a $900,000 signing bonus from the Mets. Bought a bass boat, a Toyota 4Runner, and gave the rest to his parents. I just assumed everyone born in Tupelo, Mississippi was sent home from the hospital with a bass boat. Apparently not. He had to buy his own. Never made it past high A ball for the Mets. Was just too injured. Spent half the time on a training table. Didn't get into many games. After five miserable years in the minors, he packed his bags and told his coach, I can find something better to do with my life than laying on a training table all the time. He returned to Tupelo, got married, got divorced, started in sporting goods, followed by 15 years in the construction equipment business. Now is the general manager for fleet equipment in Tupelo. He's got a camper. His brother Dennis has a boat. Life is good for Kirk Presley. And uh, yeah, that Tupelo, Mississippi, home of the world-famous concession stand brawl that took place way back in 1979 between the teams of Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee as they took on the Blonde Bombers of Larry Latham and Wayne Ferris. Of course, Wayne Ferris would later on become the Honky Tonk Man. Larry Latham would later on become a Moondog Spot. What a battle that was. Some consider the quote-unquote birth of hardcore wrestling. Of course, if you want to talk hardcore, nobody was as hardcore as Moondog Spot. Passing away of a heart attack in the ring in 2003 during Jerry Lawler's birthday bash to bring the whole thing full circle. What a crazy time that was. All right, friends, let's move on. Return number five is next. North Texas, Texas for our fifth return here. Would not be a Through the Mail Monday without a return from Texas. More specifically, North Texas, Texas. We got a grip of cards in here from Danny Darwin. Danny Darwin, Texas legend, 21 year big league career, spent most of those years in Texas. Eight with the Rangers, six with the Astros. Let's see if I can name them all. 94 top stadium club, 87 tops, 92 tops, 93 tops, 93 Donruss, and 1985 Donruss. Actually, that was pretty easy. Played during the height of the Junk Wax era. From 1978 to 1998, no doubt he has a trillion cards printed with his face on it. Big, long, lanky starter. He looks just like his name. That just sounds like a slim name with elbows and knees just coming at you from the mound. Really good pitcher. Led the National League in ERA in 1990. He has a new address here. I had to update this. Is no longer in Denton, Texas. He is now in Crossroads, Texas. Of course, there's a pretty good death metal band out of Denton. Not quite sure what they ended up naming themselves. I just know it wasn't Satan's Fingers, the Killers, or the Hospital Bombers. Danny Darwin, epic return from a great TTM. Let's move on, guys, to return number six. North Houston, Texas for our next return here. Another Texas return. This time we've got some vintage. We've got a 1957 Tops card of Mac Burke, a catcher who got into 15 games in his Major League career that spanned 1956 and 1958 he actually missed all of 1957 due to military service of course offered him to keep the extra 57 tops cards he did not he sent them back signed in blue sharpie always a little bit weird to get these vintage cards signed in blue sharpie or any kind of sharpie for that matter uh, ballpoint pen looks a little bit more of the age for these cards regardless they still look awesome mac burke still signing strong today just as he was four years ago he got one pinch hit in 1956, one at bat, and he got a hit. He got one more at bat in 1958, and he struck out, unfortunately. 15 appearances in games. He entered 13 times as a pinch runner, two times as a pinch hitter, and he played one inning at catcher. That was literally his entire career. He did play well into the 60s in the Phillies farm system before calling it a career. Mac Burke, a nice return from him. That 57 Tops card, it appears he's about ready to launch up and get a pop fly. I don't know why they do these poses off in foul territory and it can't, like, use the plate for, like, two minutes for a photo. Hey, Mac, you got a minute uh, for me to take a photo of you uh, for Tops for your baseball card, you know, that people will be asking you to sign 70 years from now? Oh, sure, no problem, dude. I got a couple minutes. You uh, just want to do it behind home plate? Nah, no, just over here in the grass is fine. No, no one's going to know. 
Ah, uh, I don't know. Strange. So strange. All right, last return from Miami, Florida. And we've got Andre Dawson, Hall of Famer Andre Dawson, inducted in 2010, eight-time All-Star. 21 years in the big, signed two of my 84 Tops cards for the set, the All-Star card as well as his base card. Nice to get this finished off. Uh, glad to get this out of the envelope after four years. And, uh, yeah, I, I knew I had this. I mean, I know what cards I send off because, of course, I take photos of every card I send these guys. So I knew these two were out, and I uh, just didn't know where in the pile of envelopes it was. Glad I found it. Andre Dawson, 21-year career. How hard is it to hit 500 home runs? He only hit 438, and he played for 21 years. So, And he was a prolific home run hitter, uh, very steady throughout his career, just not steady enough to hit 500. Uh, just goes to show you, like I said, how hard it is to get that 500 number. And there you guys go. Through the mail, Monday, put in the books. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, hit that like button. I do this every single week. I've done it for the last 299 weeks in a row. Let me know what you guys thought of this week's uh, returns. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of my four-year-old returns. I know one guy doesn't like me doing it, but uh, I updated the addresses, so you kind of have a uh, general idea of uh, who's still signing and uh, what their address is now. So... Um, at least I tried to keep it updated, even though uh, these are for some old returns, and I have some more old returns to go. And, uh, and yeah, you might be asking why I just don't open a bunch more envelopes, maybe at least, you know, not all of them, but maybe like 10 or 15 of them. But just did not have time to make a very long video this week. Uh, and, of course, the more stuff I open, the longer the video gets. So um, just trying to keep it short this week. I've got a very busy week. Of course, uh, my Ducks are playing Ohio State on Saturday. And I won't even be at that game. I'll be in Tacoma watching uh, Wrestle Dream AEW's uh, pay-per-view up there in Tacoma. So I'll be checking that out. Of course, game one of the NLCS against either the Dodgers or the Padres will be Sunday. Um, in a perfect world, I was going to make it down there. But we're just not going to have enough time on Sunday to do it. But we're going to try and get down there for game two on Monday. Chris Cards 86 on Instagram if you want to follow any of my extracurricular activities outside of, of course, my Through the Mail Monday YouTube videos. Of course, I also do post a lot of other uh, random uh, TTM send-off uh, photos and other stuff on there as well. But uh, some of my travels, some of the stuff I do, I, I usually post on Instagram too if you want to keep tabs on old Chris Cards and uh, see what I'm up to. But um, other than that, yeah, guys, a uh, lot going on this weekend. Uh, just very excited the Mets knocked off the Phillies. Uh, got a chance to play for the National League pennant. How exciting. Uh, will tears flow if they make it to the World Series? Yes, they will. Not yet. They ha it hasn't happened yet. But the last time they made it, 2015, I, uh, I did. Uh, once they told the Mets were World Series bound, I got choked up. It's uh, It's been a dry spell, friends. It's been a long time. And uh, it would be really awesome to win the whole thing. Uh, didn't think it was going to happen this year. Still don't think it's going to happen this year. Kind of playing with house money right now. But hey, the Mets are hot. And, uh, you know, this three or four day layoff between now and Sunday when they start the NLCS, it's, it's, a, it's a little worrisome. You know, I don't want them to I want them to stay hot and uh, uh, stay on it. But they also I know the bullpen needs to be rested. Uh, they have been pretty shaky of late. So uh, need everyone firing on all eight cylinders uh, for this NLCS, either against the Padres or the Dodgers, either team. I mean, there's pluses and minuses of facing either one of them. So uh, I would like them to face the Padres simply for logistical reasons. Uh, if we do go down there Monday for game two, uh, we've been to uh, Petco before. We know our way around the city pretty well. We know where to stay. Uh, we can walk to the stadium. Uh, we've never been to, I've never been to Dodger Stadium before. Never been to Chavez, uh, Chavez Ravine. Uh, never been to Chavez Ravine. So uh, that will be a little bit foreign to us. Uh, not quite knowing where to stay. Probably won't get near the ballpark. Uh, I think it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, so uh, that's a whole other ball of wax. Maybe I'll stay with Pepino, man. Uh, who knows? Uh, we'll figure that out when the time comes, though. But uh, like I said, keep tabs if you want on uh, Instagram, 1986. That's ChrisCards86 on Instagram. That's how you can follow me uh, and figure out what we're doing. And we might, might, we might just hang out on Monday and watch it at home. So we'll figure it out. I don't know what's going to happen yet. Uh, but thanks, guys, for checking out this video. Hope you guys liked it. Um, and uh, that is all I got. 19... 84 tops update video number 18 coming out Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Check that out. And I love you all. Thanks for watching. See ya.